another celebration with Fallingbrook Heights Baptist Church at the Center. We encourage you to prepare your heart, mind, and soul for a time of reflection, learning, and prayer. If you have any questions, or if you're just looking to chat, check out our website, churchatthecenter.com. And now, let's worship. Welcome to worship. We gather together either virtually or live at the Reach on Kingston Road between Avalon and Birchcliff on Sunday mornings. Now that we're virtual, you can watch this video anytime you want. So regardless of what time it is at present for you, regardless of what's happening in your life, I invite you to worship, to take a moment, to connect with the will in your person, and to decide to worship God. We use the Bible, the Bible to inspire us to sing, to pray, and to read His Word. And you can go online or you can take the Bible that you have and follow along with us regardless of the translation. As we worship together today, may God bless you and guide you and direct you together. and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name Trumpet sound, nor that I men in him be found, just in his righteousness alone, fall the sin before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone.
Hello Church, my name is Matthew Ewell, and I serve as your Church Council Chair. A few weeks ago, our Council decided to share with you what Sunday Celebration will look like into the coming months. Since that time, little over two weeks ago, so much has changed, which just points out the theme for 2020, which has been change. So today, I'm going to share with you how we'll worship together on Sunday through at least January 2021, and also invite you to share with us your thoughts and feedback on our church's way forward, specifically around Sunday celebration. As you're familiar, we have called the Birchcliff Room in the Birchmount Community Center home for over 20 years, with the, with the exception of a community center closure for Christmas Day or being unable to meet there because of a Lions Bazaar, we have been faithful in meeting every Sunday. Currently, the City of Toronto has introduced regulations that only 10 people can meet on, in one room for any given permit. Clearly, this isn't a viable solution for us meeting and worshiping together going forward. In response, we have made the decision to continue producing the Sunday Celebration video for viewing on YouTube and also meeting together in person at The Reach on Sunday morning. If you would like to meet with us at The Reach on Sunday morning, please visit our website, churchatthecenter.com, and let us know you'd like to attend. This leads us to the question, when is the right time, if at all, to return to meeting together in the Birchcliff Room? And this is where we'd really appreciate your input and feedback. Available right now at churchatthecenter.com slash church survey, you can share some of your thoughts by answering a few simple and short questions. Friends, lots is still happening at your church. Kick, youth group, council and deacon meetings, a Wednesday prayer meeting, and Pastor Ken is available quite frequently at the reach to meet and talk with you. I encourage you, reach out to each other, and then together, connect with others from Fallingbrook Heights Baptist Church. We look forward to hearing from you via the survey, to seeing you online and in person at The Reach. I'll talk to you again soon. Hey kids, Evan here, and I've got a Thanksgiving stretch for you. Thanksgiving and fall are, is one of my favorite times of the year because there's so many great things going on and so many great smells and foods and awesome things. One such smell is pumpkin spice chai. Smells good. Nisa agrees. Or apples. You can go apple picking, you can make apple pie, apple sauce, apple crisp, tons of stuff with apple. Mm. Apples are my favorite fruit. Nisa's too. And I love fall because then I can start to wear sweaters without being too warm. Ah, much better. But this time of year is also great because of all the leaves changing colors. You got red leaves and yellow leaves and orange leaves and green leaves and brown leaves and tons of beautiful colors. Beautiful colors of leaves that God has created. And it's something we can be thankful for. And Thanksgiving is such a great time to remind us to be thankful for all God does for us and how awesome and amazing God is. And so kids, I want you guys to write down three things that you're most thankful for and share them with me or your families at Thanksgiving. I know I'm thankful for Rachel, the home that we have, our families, God, and most of all, being able to be in all of your lives. Now, in the Bible, the verse or the words, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. That verse is all throughout the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I think that's a great reminder for us that no matter how hard things are, especially at this time of the year, we should give thanks to God for he is good and his love endures forever. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray to you, Lord, a prayer of thanks. Thanks for all you do for us in keeping us safe, keeping us warm, providing us your word, and providing us with all the things that we need, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that we can be thankful to you each day for the small and the big things. 
Lord God, we pray, Heavenly Father, that your love can endure forever and that it does endure forever and that we can be lights in this world for you. Lord God, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Well, here we are on the crossroads, the crossroads of timidity and courage. This is the courage campaign. And I know in life, there may be reasons to have timidity, pause, care. And there are times to have courage, valor, braveness. This is the courage campaign. In the courage campaign, we seek and we find and we have and we take. We live and we build and we give and we encourage. Journey with me on this road of courage. Our road of courage is motivated by two texts. Joshua 1. God says to the people of Israel, Be strong and very courageous. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 2 Timothy 1. Paul says to Timothy, Fan into flame the gift of God. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but of courage, of sound judgment, of discernment. Join with me as we travel down the road of courage. The Courage Campaign. This is a rallying cry for hope and faith. An eight week adventure search to help you gain your composure and your confidence for these times. We've been looking at 1 John and 2 John and 3 John from the Bible to understand better about courage. And so far we've understood over the last four weeks that you need to seek courage. You need to seek courage. You have to flip that switch within you that says, I'm willing to, I'll take the risk. I want courage. Courage to act in the face of fear. After seeking courage, you'll then find courage. But oddly enough, finding courage isn't from some kind of internal source or a well within you. Even though the world may tell us that, that's not actually where courage comes from. Your courage comes from a source outside of you. Faith, hope, ultimately from God who gives life. And when you search, when you seek, when you find, then you can have courage. It's kind of like wisdom. You can seek for wisdom. You can find wisdom and you can have it. You can possess it. It can be yours. And when you seek and you find and you have courage, then you can take courage. You can use it like a tool to accomplish something and to do something in the face of fear to act. Well, the first journey we've had in the Courage Campaign will be followed next week by the second journey that we start on. Uh, when we look at these things, to live with courage. But today, Today's a rest. Today's a Sabbath. So I encourage you, in fact, I give you the right to use your pause button. And if you're not yet at a place right now where you're <sighs> rested, relaxed, paused from the things you've been doing throughout the last six days, then take a moment. Pause. And Relax. When we consider courage in, the, in a connection to the Sabbath, rest, then we can gain more strength for the journey. 
Sabbath, actually, when you go back to the ancient Hebrew, came from the root of the word pause, stop, refrain. So that's what I want you to do. And today we're going to look at the seven P's of Sabbath. Because when we have Sabbath rest and we connect with God, we find ourselves at a place whereby our courage gets stronger. Before we get into the P's of Sabbath, first I want to share with you an example. A strange example, an ironic example. You see, when we think of rest in our times, it's hard to find an icon of rest. In fact, we don't really celebrate people or characters in our world that are great resters. We look instead at the great stories of conquest, of accomplishment, of success. But people who rest, well, it's hard to find. So I want to use an ironic example of a man, in fact he was a brother, who <laughs> were incredibly hard workers. His name was John Wesley. He's the strange founder of the Wesleyan movement, the Methodist movement. Perhaps you're of that tradition. John Wesley, in his life, rode over 250,000 miles on horseback. That's 10 circuits around the globe at the equator. He preached over 40,000 sermons. Sometimes he would rise before dawn to, to preach. Preaching to people as they went to work along the road. Think of going on the side of the 401 and preaching early in the morning. That's what John Wesley did. Regularly he would preach three times a day. John Wesley rode in his saddle and had at times sickness and he invented cures for his sickness and wrote a book on medicinal cures even though he wasn't trained in the medicinal arts as a doctor. He uh, wrote uh, a book and started clinics for the poor. He was called the father of religious paperback. He wrote sermons and tracts and pamphlets of every kind numbering around, numbering around 5,000 that some of them he wrote while on horseback in a saddle. At one point, he needed to tie himself to the saddle because he was so tired he thought he'd fall off. It's a hard-working man. John Wesley wrote about Sabbath. And this is what he wrote. Look unto the heavens and see. Behold the clouds which are higher than thou. For thy own sake, therefore, God thy Maker doeth this. For thy own sake he calleth thee to serve him. For thy own sake he demands a part of thy time to be restored to him that gave thee all. Acknowledge his love. Learn while thou art on earth to praise the King of Heaven. Spend this day as thou hopest to spend that day which shall never have an end. <laughs> you see, what John Wesley was in fact saying, and please excuse the King James way in which he spoke, but John was in fact sharing the truth that Sabbath, Sundays, your day of rest, can be like a day of heaven. So the first P that we have when we consider Sabbath is pleasure. This is a day of pleasure. Now, we'll go deeper with this, but I just wanted to share with you a little bit that when we think about pleasure and Sundays, I don't know about your tradition, but in some traditions, to put pleasure with Sunday, they didn't fit. But I want you to think about this. God made you for His good pleasure. That's what the Bible tells us that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, the first text we'll look at is Genesis 1.26. The first chapter of the Bible says this, God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. 
So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And it says, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Into chapter 2, it says, By the seventh day God had finished the work he'd been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work, the work of creating that he had done. Let me just take us to another passage of Scripture in Colossians. Colossians points to Jesus and says, For in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, Visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. Sabbath is for your pleasure. Sabbath is for you to enjoy. Sabbath is for you to have fun, to live life, to give generously, to love others. We move from understanding Sabbath as a day of pleasure, to go deeper and understand what does that mean to God for this to be a day of pleasure, we move to the second, third, and fourth P's of Sabbath. It's what I call the Sabbath continuum. To understand that Sabbath was made for pleasure, we then move also to penitence, to presence, and to praise. When we understand these three things, you see Sabbath is God's calling of you to be penitence, presence, and praise. In the Ten Commandments that are listed in Exodus 20, eight of them say, you shall not. You shall not. And it continues and says, you shall not uh, murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit idolatry. You shall not uh, 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 commit idolatry with your hands or head or mouth. You shall not steal. You shall not covet or lie. One of the Ten Commandments says, Honor your father and mother and you will live a long life. And one of the commands says, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. I'll share with you the, the whole of that command in Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any re a foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Remember, Sabbath means pause. It means stop. It means refrain. It means rest. When we think of uh, Sabbath in this, this way, then we can refrain from those things. We can refrain from pride. We can re refrain from isolation. We can refrain from criticism, which is the opposite of penitence, presence, and praise. You see, God calls you to suspend the, I want to do it my way. I'm number one. I'm most important. I'm in control. He wants you to suspend that and to humble yourself before him, realizing you're not all that. Humble yourself before him. If you're unsure about ways that you can humble yourself before God, uh, connect with me or talk with me or talk to a sibling in Christ. Find a way and times and spaces to be alone with God and praise him with the church. Sometimes we call this worship, but true worship is loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's a lifelong thing. To praise God is coming together with others and speaking about His holiness, singing songs of worship. This is the way that you can connect with God. Penitence by realizing that you can come before God and say, forgive me. Presence, sp uh, taking time to be with God. Uh, taking moments in which you set aside other things that are going on in your life to be alone with God. And praise joining others to do so. But, but let's move on. And let's move on and talk about what's in it for you. 
why you should do this. Sometimes the world would ask about trade-offs and why you shouldn't be doing something else on Sunday besides penitence and presence and praise. What's in it for you, you might ask. And God answers that question. Why should you set aside times for pleasure, penitence, presence, praise? Well, these P's that we're considering, you see, God has plans for you. And the most profound promise, the promise that He's given to you, has to deal with provision and peace. Promise, provision, and peace. And the most profound promise that has been already given to you, we see in Luke 2. Luke 2 tells us about a man named Simeon. And Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. Tells us he was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents, that's Mary and Joseph, brought in Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. You see, God's promise, <clears throat> and in the, uh, the Bible, uh, some, uh, some theologians have taken a look at the promises, the, the prophecies, and they've estimated that there's 3,268 that have already been fulfilled. But there's still 3,140 3, that have yet to be fulfilled. You are promised through the Word of God. You're promised many things. And the greatest promise that you have been promised has already been fulfilled. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. The promise that God would come to save you and save me. His promise has been fulfilled. He has given His promise, but there's far more to give you already, I give you still. Indeed, He promises provision. And that's one of the things about Sabbath that we sometimes miss out on. It's very counter-cultural. But Sabbath calls you to stop and simply receive from God what He's given to you. Oh, I know. The culture around us tells us to work all the time. The culture around us tells us that the only way we'll do well in our chosen professions, if you're still working, is to work all the time. But God says, trust me, one day a week, trust me that I'll provide for you, suspend your work, give up that which you are pursuing, and rest. Cease from work. Cease from that which bogs you down. That's the promise of Sabbath. When I was growing up on the park farm, Saturday was a hard working day. Saturday was a time in which we had to get our chores done. But Sundays were different. You see, Sundays, yes, we looked after the animals, and yes, we gathered the eggs from the chickens, but we did it in worship to God. In fact, Sundays on our farm, homework was not required. <laughs> It's interesting that I made it through all those years of school without doing my homework sometimes on the weekend and definitely not having to do them on Sundays. I realized over time that the truth was that God would provide for us and we didn't have to worry. We didn't have to fear that He would, that he, that he would not provide. We didn't have to work and not give worship to Him. He gives His promise and his, in His promise, you find His providence. Know His promises. Accept His blessings. Allow the greatest thing that God gives to you through His promise and His providence, His peace. His peace is one of the things, one of the fruit of the Spirit that grows in us by the Spirit simply being with us. And we can rest in that peace. You see, Sabbath is made for your pleasure. 
to go places, to be with people that you enjoy. But that day of pleasure that you're given, God gives it to you because God calls you to recognize who you are, to be penitent before Him, humble before Him, to spend time in His presence, abiding with Him, acknowledging Him, expressing your love to Him, praising Him. And when you do that, you can also know His promise to you. You can know His provision, His providence for you. You can trust in Him and you can know His peace. And that's what Sabbath is all about, regardless of which day you're watching this. Know the promises by reading the Word of God. Accept His blessings, whatever they may be for you. Know His blessings and allow the Spirit to grow peace in you. Do, uh, construct your day, put your day together enough so that the Spirit can grow peace in you. Accept His blessing. Do what brings you closer to God. Reminds me of a day, a Sabbath day that Jesus had. Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as, as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing which is unlawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Jesus, your great Lord and Savior, or the person you can accept, the Holy Spirit who can indwell you, gives you the Sabbath. Day of rest. Moment of rest. Times of rest. He gives you times to pause, to recognize who He is, and to love Him. So how does this connect with courage? How does this reflection today of the seven P's of Sabbath, how does that connect with courage? How does our understanding of these things in Sabbath give us guts, nerve, and bravery, and valor, and daring, and audacity in the face of our trials? We know Monday's coming. We know our next day's coming. Sometimes we will pull from next week into our Sunday and weigh ourselves down. Don't do that today. Just pause and accept God's love for you. How does Sabbath give you courage? When you connect with the Lord God of the universe, He's the one that will fill you up with courage, give you discernment of what to do, and affirm in you His good work so that the, the courage that He gives you and builds up in you, you can know you're doing what God calls you to do with great confidence as you interact with others in a loving way. He is the source of your courage. And next time we're going to be talking about that. I want to close by going back to what John Wesley said. John Wesley said this, the Lord not only hallowed the Sabbath day, but He also blessed it. You throw away your own blessing if you neglect to keep this day holy. It is a day of special grace. The King of Heaven now sits upon His mercy seat in a more gracious manner than on other days to bestow blessings on those who observe it. Awake! Arise! Let God give you His blessing. Receive a token of His love. Cry to Him that thou mayest find the riches of His grace and mercy in Christ Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for your great, great love for us, seen in the world all around us, the provision you make for us each and every day. We thank you, Lord God, for your great love, and we ask you to remind us of the times of life in which you call us to pause, the times in which you call us to enjoy the pleasure of life. Please teach us, Lord God, how to be penitent, 
uh, how to enjoy your presence and how to praise you. We ask you, Lord God, as well, that you'll show us how indeed, Lord God, to, uh, to pursue our life with you, to indeed, Lord God, as we grow with you and learn with you how to accept your promises, how to accept your providence. Please bless us and help us for those that are struggling at this time with financial need. And we pray, Lord God, for your peace that passes understanding. We pray, Lord God, and we ask you to show us how to help each other, to bless each other, to care for each other in the way you'd have us do so. And Lord, as we do so, I pray that you'll bind us together, help those that are sick, help Lord, those, Lord God, that have economic challenges, and help Lord, those, those, Lord God, that would seek to have residence here in Canada as, as landed immigrants. We pray that you'll bless us indeed, bless the reach and our church on this Thanksgiving day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed praying and singing and hearing the Word of God, whether virtually or together with others. We are bound together by the love of Jesus Christ. And as you think about these things we've talked about, if you have questions about what we've spoken about or sang about or prayed about, you can be in touch with myself or Evan through the website, churchofthecenter.com. Continue to worship God throughout the balance of your day and week. And let me close with this blessing from Jude, the brother of Jesus. To him who's able to keep you from falling, to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory and majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service. For more information, visit our website, churchatthecenter.com. God bless.